Hey, how you doing? Hope you all are doing great. As you've seen in the thumbnail, in this video, we're going to see what if Naruto was son of Freya. This is part one, and before getting into video, I request you to check the author of this fanfic and show some love and support. Name of the story is Reading Hellas Vanguard by Helgi. Do check it out. All details and description. And if you want next part of this series, please leave a like, share, and consider subscribe. Let's get into the video. Also check out Patreon for uncensored spicy content. Link in description. The Nexus room was silent. The singular being present, known only as the host, did not even make the sound usually associated with movement or breathing, simply sitting perfectly still and silent as it stared out over the empty room. The room itself was a blank beige walled space with a handful of simple but comfortable seats. Similarly, the host was a pale, gray, humanoid figure in a drab jumpsuit, appearing like an animated puppet almost if not for its deep, dark, soulless eyes. Slowly, the host rose up its right hand above its head, the faint ruffling of fabric being the only sound in the room, followed by a snap of its fingers and a deafening crack. With the snap, a collection of figures burst into existence out of a single flash of light. They were a diverse group, Ten in total, if excluding the host. They were also a very displeased group of individuals, bouncing immediately to their feet in outrage and shock at their sudden teleportation to a strange place. Where are we? One of their number, a young woman with pink hair asked. I don't know, but I doubt it's anywhere good. An older silver-haired man replied. Kakashi, a blonde man, asked in shock. Hella, another man said with a conflicted scowl, as he looked over at a woman with a headdress. Oh, hello there, father. What an interesting place for a reunion. The now named Hellas said with an acidic smile. The loud crack of a snap drew the group's attention to the host who briefly gazed over them before snapping again and summoning an ancient looking book. Greetings. Forgive my sudden intrusion into your lives, but allow me to explain the situation that is occurring now and introduce each of you. The host flatly said, its eerie voice would normally put most of the guests on edge, but an odd sense of calm filtered over them. You have been brought to the Nexus Room, a space between the multitude of realities across all of time and space. Here your powers and abilities are limited to that of an average human, as you are simply temporary guests in this place at the behest of powers beyond even your comprehension. Beyond, perhaps, even my comprehension. That all having been said, you are in no danger and instead have the opportunity to enjoy a fresh start at life together alongside another whom all of you either have known or do know. The host explained. Minato slowly lowered back into his seat. This is a lot to take in. I understand, but I assure you all that this is in your benefit. You are not your original selves, a copy of your original incarnation, and little more. Your tasks here are simple and rewarding. As you are only copies, your existence is meaningless except to entertain those that create all of this. As I said, though, you will be rewarded. Should you complete your task, you shall be granted a new opportunity in life. The host explained. The guests stared blankly before the red-headed woman among them finally asked. Who are you? You may simply refer to my person as the host. Now your compliance is mandatory. You will read and react to events that constitute your original future primarily focused onto the individual that ties each of you together but is not present. The host said, the group looked around. Several of them failed to recognize the others before eyes widened. Where is Naruto at? Hella asked with narrowed eyes. He will be joining shortly, but not until after you have begun to read. With a snap, the host planted the book into Hella's hands. One final thing will be introductions. Then Hella will begin to read. The host announced, well, as our host said, I am Hella Odin's daughter, rightful heir to Asgard. The tall, darkly dressed woman said as she swept her hands across her head to remove the headdress. What is your connection to Naruto? The redhead demanded. Her toes, as well as the Asgardians, will be revealed in time. Continue with introductions. The host commanded. Hmm. Very well, I am Odin Borson, king of Asgard. Odin said as he continued to eye his daughter. Frigga, Queen of Asgard. Similarly to Odin, Frigga looked conflicted at the sight of her stepdaughter. She had never been close, but neither had been antagonistic either. I am Thor the God of Thunder, and rightful heir to Asgard. 
Thor declared while glaring at Hela. God? One of the shinobi asked. Just let it go. S-A-S-K. It's not like that is the weirdest thing today. His sensei said, Please finish your introductions. Then we will get started with the reading. The host brought the guests back on task. Very well. My name is Loki, Prince of Asgard and rightful heir. Loki smoothly said while glancing over at his adoptive siblings, getting a flat glare from Hela and exasperated frown from Thor. The shinobi present glanced at one another mentally, communicating their opinions about the odd family dynamic the Asgardians had in place. Right, I am Minato, and this is Kushina. Naruto is our son. Minato commented on getting surprised looks from the Asgardians, though they refrained from saying anything. I'll just round this out. I'm Kakashi's teacher, and these two are SASK and Sakura. The masked man introduced his team. Now you may begin the reading. Many of the questions you may have will likely be answered. Proceed Hela, Odin's daughter. The host said. Hela slowly nodded. She felt more complacent than was natural, but she would play along for now. If what the bland being said was true, in a short time, she would be once more reunited with her love, and they could decide a course of action after that. Asgard, the home to many, most notably Thor, Odin, and at one point in time Loki. It was a beautiful land made of giant gold buildings and breathtaking landscapes. Now, however, it looks a lot different. What was once a beautiful sight was now dull and looking worn down. If one were to look down into the actual city, they would see hundreds of Asgardian soldiers laying dead on the ground, blades embedded into different parts of their bodies. All but one soldier was dead. Hela, Odin hissed in fury. Rebellion ends in death. Theirs are mine, and they were so much weaker. Hela said simply. The shinobi eyed the woman with a new sense of danger, as they realized she might just be a problem. A big problem if they were understanding the situation that was unfolding in the lands of Asgard in their story now. The warriors met their end by the same person. The person responsible for the massacre was a woman who looked no older than 25. She wore a form-fitting black and dark green bodysuit with a portion of the shoulders missing. She has long flowing black hair as well as dark shadows around her eyes. Her name is Hela Odin's daughter, the firstborn child of the former king of Asgard. Former king? Several of the guests muttered. Well, it seems an opportunity has presented itself. Hela and Loki both said at the same time. How is it they aren't biologically related in any way, but they are more similar than I am with either of them? Thor pouted faintly. Go back to whatever cave you crept out from, yelled the final Asgardian warrior, you evil demoness. He added before charging. Unfortunately for him, he didn't get very far as Hela wound her arm back and created a blade that pierced the man's body. He was left suspended on the blade, his feet not touching the ground. So rude Asgard is my home after all. I can't believe you would have subordinates so willing to insult their own home like that father. Hela joked, causing Odin to roll his eyes. Taking a look around to make sure no one is standing, she turns around to her companion. He's a bald-headed man with two tattoos on his head and armor. This is Scourge the man she ended up giving a job to. He didn't exactly accept more like not answer and didn't get killed for it. A traitor. Odin frowned. A hypocrite. Loki scoffed, getting a betrayed look from his father. They are so dysfunctional. Sakura whispered to SASK. The dark-haired boy was self-aware enough to simply give her a look before slowly pointing between himself, her, and Kakashi. Come now. We have things to do, she says as she walks past him. Scourge takes one look around before following suit. The two made their way through Asgard in direction of the Bifrist. To both of their surprise, Ho Fund, the sword that activates the Bifrist, was missing. Impossible, Scourge says while running up the steps. It was just here. He added before turning to look at Hela. The goddess narrowed her eyes in anger before turning around and walking away. Scourge caught up to her and spoke will find the sword. Whoever took it can't be too far away. He's a bit of a coward. Kushina commented sourly. Cowards can be useful. Minato and Hela said simultaneously, blinking in surprise as they glanced at one another. See to it that you do. But never mind that now. There's something much more important we must do. Hurry along now. Hela told him. Seeing that she wasn't in the best of moods, he didn't speak and simply walked faster to keep pace. He wondered where they were going. To his confusion, 
she took them to Odin's throne room. Having not been in there, that many times he looked around taking in the sights. He stopped when he noticed Hela stopped walking and was looking up at the mural on the ceiling. The goddess of death felt a deep anger flow through her as she looked at the images. Goddess of death, Minato mumbled. A mental image of the phantom-like Shinigami hovered over Hela's shoulder. That's only extremely ominous. Kushina mumbled. This is what Odin replaced the truth with. She hissed out as she took in the pictures of Thor and Loki. Look at these lies. Goblets and garden parties? She hissed. She looked at the next images. Peace treaties? She said no more, instead opting to create multiple blades and strike the ceiling at different points. Lies? Thor asked. Odin said nothing while Hela sent her father a look. Frigga looked guilty as well. Yes, Odin believed it was the best way to achieve a brighter, peaceful future. Frigga admitted, lies don't form a good base to build from. Kakashi said, S.A.S.K. and Sakura nodded along. They knew now about the lies surrounding Naruto and S.S.K.'s childhoods that only made things worse as time went on. Scourge watched as the ceiling began breaking before completely falling down. He moved out of the way as to not get hit by debris while Hela stayed put. When the slight smoke cleared, he noticed a different mural. Scourge frowned in confusion as he stared at the new images. Odin in the center. Around him, images of battles portraying Hela and himself, as well as one other notable person. Hela began explaining to him the story of how Asgard was a force to be reckoned with before Odin seemingly had a change of heart. He tuned part of her out as his attention was focused on one image in particular. Odin and Hela side by side. Odin holding up his golden staff and Hela holding up a hammer that looked like the one Thor used. What really caught his attention was the other man. In that same image, there was a blonde man standing behind Hela. The shocking part was that his arm was holding her around the waist, pulling her towards him. He too had a staff being held up into the air. It was nothing fancy, a simply thin black staff with a C shape at the end of it. Naruto. Several people in the room, excluding only the host, Thor, and Loki said quietly. And as our ambition grew greater than his, the old man decided to seal us away until the end of time. She finished. Whether she knew that Scourge wasn't listening, he didn't know, but he was thankful she didn't call him out on it. He was tempted to ask her who the guy was in the picture, but didn't get the chance as she continued on forwards. You sealed our son away? Kushina shouted toward the old man. He was a threat. Odin snarled back. Naruto is a hero. Sakura joined in. The shinobi were immediately on their missing member side of things. He had powered through every obstacle and won not only their respect, but also peace for their people. He was a weapon, Odin said grimly, causing rage to spark in the eyes of Hela and the shinobi. Before it could continue, the host intervened, forcing the group back on track. Let's go, she told him. The two walked down a few sets of stairs before Scourge realized where they were. Odin's vault, he whispered to himself. He had only ever heard of this place. It was said to contain only the most powerful artifacts. They walked down the path, lined on both sides with relics. Hela stopped at a golden gauntlet. It's impressive. Not that I know what any of that is. Kakashi commented. Less impressive than you think. Both Hela and Loki said. Thor pouted as he knew what was coming. Though not as badly as Odin even though only Frigga could tell with him. Fake, she said as she knocked it over. Most of this stuff is fake anyways. Weak, she commented as she looked at the casket of ancient winters. Some of the Asgardians shot Hela a hurt look causing the woman to roll her eyes. The shinobi remained largely lost though. The crown asserter she noted was smaller than she expected. The tesseract was in her opinion not bad. Finally, she came across the item she was looking for. Not bad. Loki asked slowly, just watch big sister, you'll catch on to real power soon enough. Hela smiled arrogantly, now this is truly special, the eternal flame, she said as she dipped her hand in it. She pulled it out and Scourge watched as the flames danced in the palm of her hand. Hela produced a weapon out of her sleeve and proceeded to smash the ground until a portion caved in. Looking down all that could be seen was darkness. The goddess turned around. Odin tensed. His daughter was rebuilding her forces, which meant after them would be him. Want to see what real power looks like? 
She asked before letting herself fall backwards into the pit. She flipped right side up on the way down and landed gracefully. She looked at the bodies of all her warriors and her trusted dog in sadness. With the eternal flame you are reborn. She exclaimed before slamming her hand on the ground. The flames turned green and began consuming everything around her inside the room. The skeletons of the long-dead warriors lit up in green flames before giving them life. Fenris' eyes glowed before it, too, began standing on all fours. Soon her former comrades were all awake and began walking towards her before kneeling. Minato frowned at that. Having been a victim of the Edo Tensei, he recalled how wrong it felt. However, this seemed drastically different, and he wasn't sure what those warriors could feel at all. I've missed you, she said looking at Fenris. I missed you all, she repeated to everyone else. She waved her hand, and all the undead warriors began jumping out of the hole. Minato hummed at that. Despite her coming across as a power, hungry tyrant, almost he could also tell that perhaps there was more to this hella. He himself had been regarded as a butcher and monster by some so. Was the concept of a warrior queen like her being so brutal to her enemies really so bad? Kushina simply looked displeased. She was already guessing at the connection of her son with Hela thanks to the mural. It didn't necessarily fill her with optimism for what they would be reading more about. The feeling only worsened as she realized that this was her son's future they were reading. We're still missing one. She said quietly to herself as she walked deeper into the room. She walked for a good five minutes down a set of stairs until she found what she was looking for. It was a pitch black room. The only light visible was a small fire in the corner of the room that didn't seem to give off much light. In the center was what looked like a large boulder. You really sealed him away like a bijou or like... Sakura said horrified for her friend. Kagaya. S.A.S.K. frowned. He and Naruto had plenty of issues in the past, but Naruto was the one person he truly respected and called brother. He could only imagine how long the blonde had been sealed away. Already he was on the same side as this hella woman. His loyalty was to his friend, the man that had pulled him back from becoming a monster himself. Etched into the stone were hundreds upon hundreds of Asgardian runes. The old fool really outdid himself with this. She said as she ran her hand along the stone. Her prison weakened with his death, but not his. It made sense to her, though. Of the two, he was the stronger one. Not that she'd ever admitted to him. She didn't want him to get a big head. Thor and Loki exchanged a look. They couldn't help but wonder just what this Naruto was like. What kind of horror was about to be unleashed? Kushina eyed the woman once more as her thoughts on her and her son ran through her mind. Kushina had never really gotten much of a chance to be a mother, but still she felt protective of her son even after all the power he had gained that her husband had told her of. It was natural. She placed both of her hands on it before pushing her power into it. The runes glowed a bright green before cracks began appearing on its surface. Soon it was done, the boulder exploded. And so he is freed. Odin sight. He sounded largely defeated. Blackness was all he knew. He didn't feel anything around him, see anything, or hear anything. It wasn't that he was deaf, no, there just wasn't anything around to make any noise except for his own breathing. All he had were his thoughts. He didn't know how long it had been since he'd been trapped here. He'd long since lost track. It felt like forever, though. Most of the time he spent going over just how he had ended up here. A torture in its own form. S.A.S.K. grumbled unhappily. The host watched the group closely. It could sense the displeasure among many of the readers. The tension growing over them. It had been so sudden. His life was great. He and SSK had defeated Kagaya with a bit of help from the sage. The two worked out their issues and SSK had finally seen the error of his ways as Itachi had wished. Everything was good, but over time he noticed something strange. As he grew, so too did his power. It seemed that Hagoromo had given him more than just a small power boost. Eventually his power became so great he had no equal on his planet. When his time finally came, and he died of old age, he found himself in a similar room as the one where he had met his mom. So this is how then, or at least part of how, it was the sage's fault, Kakashi commented. Who is Kagaya? Thor asked. Imagine an all-powerful goddess able to create and destroy on a whim and travel between dimensions as easily as opening a door. 
S-A-S-K said. The Asgardians grimaced. Hella smirked. Kagaya sounded impressive indeed. Only this time, he wasn't with his mom. The only other person in that place was a whitish yellow figure with no distinguishable features. When he asked who he was the figure referred to itself as the one above all. He explained how his power had reached heights that should have been unattainable to mere humans. As such, he would not be going to the heaven that his world leads to. Instead, he would awaken and reside in a place called Asgard. That's not fair, though, Sakura stated. That's right, it's not. That old sage bastard went even after sitting around the mortal world for centuries after he died. But Naruto can't? Kushina was outraged. I'm glad. Had he gone to your heaven, he wouldn't have had a second lifetime. A happier lifetime, even though it had trials and battles of its own. Hella said simply, Before the blonde had a chance to protest, he was ejected from the space and awoke in a completely different place. Not only that, but he looked the way he did when he was 24 and had his old power intact. After a few years in his new home, he joined their army and quickly rose through the ranks. Eventually, his power was known throughout the lands, and he found himself as Odin's right-hand man. His word was only less impactful than Odin's himself and his daughter Hela. He's very different from the Naruto we know. Kakashi said, he's had another lifetime of experiences. Just like people change over a lifetime, he would change more from a second one. Loki said, getting a surprised look that annoyed him from Thor. Though the small smile from Frigga caused the god of mischief to bite his tongue for now. Hela and himself were Odin's main weapons in their conquests. The two of them would lead the charges against enemies, both invading and defending, and together took many lands. The Nine Realms were won basically because of them too. Their chemistry was good, so well that they were almost inseparable. It came as no surprise to anyone when word got out that the two were together. Over time, they grew even closer, and eventually with Odin's blessing they wed. They were powerful, they were feared and respected. Everything was good. I really do not like Naruto being referred to as a weapon. Minato said, funny considering, S.A.S.K. said with a look causing the blonde to narrow his eyes at him. Oh yes, father and father-in-law, so similar at their base level. Hella said, causing Minato to frown once more in agitation while Odin refused to take his daughter's bait. That was until Odin feared that Hellas' ambition for power and dominance was growing out of hand. Odin had a difficult choice to make. He loved his daughter and son-in-law, but feared for the future. He knew that wherever Hela went her husband would follow. His fear drove him to seal them away for all of eternity. The room remained silent, but a series of glares and thoughtful looks filled the room. A few guilt-ridden ones as well. All of them wondered how they would handle the situation, and each of them hoped that they would have made a better solution than Odin. Sadly, they would never know. The blonde never saw it coming as one moment he and Hela had just finished a hard battle and were exhausted. As they were preparing to depart, Odin had ambushed them. A beam of light from Odin's staff was the last thing he saw before the familiar blackness took over. Father, Thor mumbled in shock at what he had just learned. Hmm, I have to say an excellent double cross. Maybe I am your son after all. Loki said watching the pain frown deepen on Odin's face in sadistic joy. The shinobi, had they not been won over in support of their friend and son from the beginning, were now committed to him and his apparent lover even more. They also had a strong distaste for this king of Asgard. He clearly wasn't one to trust. His musings were interrupted as a green light appeared in front of him. His eyes grew wide as he realized what was happening. Suddenly, for the first time in years, he hears her voice. Welcome back, darling. He hears. He couldn't see her as the bright green light from the fire, as well as not seeing light in years, had left him sensitive for the moment. It would take hours or days for a normal person to recuperate from this. For him, however, it only took a few minutes. When his eyesight was back, he finally saw her face. Hella was as beautiful as he remembered. He walked forward and wrapped her in a hug. She sighed, but returned the embrace nonetheless. Emotions and such were never really her thing, but she'd make an exception. Sakura and Kushina awed at the sight. As guarded as they felt toward the woman wrapped in darkness, they could see both Naruto and Hela cared for one another deeply. Frigga also smiled faintly at the sight. 
He lets her go and takes a look around at the now broken rock he was in. So what have I missed? Where's that old man? He asked referring to Odin. The old man is dead. She said happily before taking a look at his tattered clothing. Before anything else though, she trailed off. She snapped her fingers in his direction and on him a new set of clothing appeared. He now had on a pair of black pants along with a form-fitting black and green shirt. Over the shirt was a piece of black armor covering the chest and shoulders but leaving the sides open. He had matching arm guards on both arms. Oh, that looks good, Sakura said. She was so used to the variations of orange. Seeing her friend in something else made it much easier to see how handsome he was. For her brother figure, she could only approve, and oddly enough, it got points for Hela in her mind. Matching colors, huh? He grinned at her. She snorted quickly in amusement before walking off. Kushina hummed, and Minato chuckled at her actions. He knew she was trying not to gush about her baby interacting with his wife, but it wasn't really in her to be able to restrain herself all that well. Come now, I'll fill you in on what's going on. She told him. He followed suit and left the room and jumped out of the hole they were in. Scourge noticed him and realized it was the same guy he'd seen in the mural. He looked innocent enough, unlike Hela, but he felt something was off about the man. Odin's gotten some new ones since the last time I was here. Naruto commented as he walked alongside Hela. Yes. Too bad most of the things in here are either fake or weak. She says before turning to Scourge to tell him something. The two noticed that their blonde companion was no longer walking alongside them. Turning around, they found him looking at a glowing blue cube. The Asgardians grimaced in various amounts of distaste as they knew what caught Naruto's eye. Hela simply smirked. That's the only decent thing in this place. She commented to him. He didn't answer. Instead, his gaze was kept on the cube. He was looking at with concentration she hadn't seen from him before. What is it, darling? She asked. Again, he didn't reply. Instead, he picked the cube up and began to close his hand around it, then began adding pressure. In a matter of seconds, the cube let off a small pulse of power before it was crushed. I think he has already gained enormous power, but whatever that is must be incredibly strong on its own. Kakashi commented. Smart of him to use it. He has changed a lot. SASK said. Minato and Kushina both glanced toward Team 7, causing Kakashi to stiffen while the younger pair failed to notice. It seemed not all was forgotten and forgiven when it came to certain treatment of a certain blonde in his first life. No matter how things had turned out in the end, when he opened his hand again, they noticed a small blue stone inside the small pile of glass that was the cube. Naruto dropped the glass, leaving only the stone in his hand. So this is an infinity stone. The blonde said to himself, That sounds pretty interesting. Kushina said, Interesting is a very grave understatement. Thor said, Only calling it a grave understatement is itself a grave understatement. Loki added on, You two really have no idea about some of the more insanely powerful things out there, do you? Odin failed to prepare you for the real powers out there. Hela said with a scoff before she continued to read, Odin told me about these stones once. There's six of them, each giving the user great power, depending on what stone he or she has in their possession. This will be useful, he commented. He took off his arm guard and pulled his sleeve back. On his forearm was a simple storage seal from when he was alive. He placed the stone close to it, and the others watched as the stone disappeared. The seal glowed briefly before it died down. Well, now that that's done, Naruto began as he went, and wrapped an arm around his wife. Lead the way. He finished. She shook her head in amusement, but continued nonetheless. Scourge, meanwhile, watched in confusion the whole time. He was about to speak when his new queen turned her attention to him. Find the sword. I don't care if you need to turn Asgard upside down. I want it found. Understood? She asked. Scourge gulped, but nodded. I guess cowards really do have their uses. Kushina said, Good. We'll be back in a few hours. Now go. The man left the vault on a mission, for he knew if he failed, he was as good as dead. So where are we going? Nardo asked. Hella let a smirk grace her face. To our chambers, of course. It's been over 1,500 years, you know. I'm getting impatient, let's go. She told him. Naruto's eyes widened in excitement as he knew he was in for a good time and hurried after her. 
Kakashi and Minato smiled, while a few others grimaced. Kushina did not want to picture her baby in that sort of situation at all, while Sakura blushed lightly despite having recently married SSK herself. After a few hours of fun and a brief explanation, later the two now refreshed entities were standing before the inhabitants of Asgard. Hela looks out at the people before speaking up. Refreshed. Loki rolled his eyes. Oh, please, like you can even imagine. Hela replied. What are you implying? Loki growled. He wasn't one to be humiliated. That even if you were to have sex with someone, it wouldn't compare in the slightest to he and I making love to one another. We just do everything a bit. Hela trailed off. Better? Thor asked sarcastically. Well, yes, but I was going to say more honestly. We are married, you know. Have either of you ever felt true love? She asked with a raised eyebrow, causing both younger Asgardians to stare back at her awkwardly. She was far different than what they were expecting. Actually sitting and talking with her was making a different image of the goddess of death in their mind. Everyone here has decided against our rule. She says referring to herself and Naruto. One of you knows who stole the sword to activate the Bifrist, or one of you yourselves has stolen it. So we're going to give you a little incentive to hand it over. You there. She points at a woman in the crowd. Bring her forth. On command, her warriors retrieve the woman. She was crying, pleading to be let go, but her pleas fell on deaf ears. Hmm. A public execution. Haven't seen one of those in a long time. Naruto commented as he watched Hela present Scourge with an axe. Hold on. Naruto wouldn't be okay with that. Sakura said in shock. Oh. You know him so well after what? Twenty years, maybe? I've known him for centuries. Fought alongside him for just as long on battlefields that would ensure you never slept again. You know a child. That is a man. Hella said, causing Sakura to click her mouth closed. They are establishing control anyway. Sakura, Naruto served as Hokage before he died. Do you honestly believe he never ordered the execution of someone or never had to kill someone? He was a soldier for Kami's sake. Kushina reprimanded. He worked for peace though, not oppression. S.A.S.K. argued. You are a child. Hella said as she returned to reading. Just as the man was about to bring the axe down, a man in the crowd admitted that he knew where the sword was. Take us. She ordered. They were taken to a mountainside where two giant doors were closed. The goddess began creating blades, but a hand on her shoulder stopped her. Please allow me. I haven't been able to really stretch my legs since I've been free. He told her. Many of the guests leaned forward at the notion of some of Naruto's powers being showcased. She took a step back and gave him some space. Very well. Smiling at her, he raised his hand in direction of the door and used his magnet release to forcefully pull the door off the mountain. It remained floating in midair until he dropped it down using it as a bridge for them to get across. After you, my queen, he told her as he extended his hand. With that being said, the army headed in. She walked in with her army following suit, only to find out that the chamber was now empty. The undead warriors began storming the room, looking for any hidden citizens only to come up with nothing. The situation is weird, but I like the interaction. You can tell you two care for one another. Kushina said, finally having decided she could accept her daughter-in-law. Hella chuckled as she smirked at the redhead. Hella narrowed her eyes in anger and was about to speak before she was cut off by a banging sound. Then another. That's coming from the throne room, Naruto commented as he looked in that direction. Thor is here. I'll be sure to kill him this time. Hela said. Who's Thor? Naruto asked. My brother. The god of thunder, she told him using air quotes when saying his title. This will be kind of weird. Meeting the in-laws is always a pain. Kakashi joked. The others turned to stare at him. Kakashi slowly sank deeper into his seat as the others gave him blank stares. He turned as he felt someone patting his shoulder. You've come a long way trying to be humorous from the little kid I had on my team. Just maybe read the room better. Minato said pleasantly, causing his student to sink back into his seat even further. Your brother? Hmm. Perhaps I should meet him. He said, rubbing his chin. But before that, do you mind making me another staff? I could make one myself but it won't work for what I have in mind. He asked her. Hella brought her arm up in his direction. On command, a pole began extending out of her sleeve until finally the whole thing was revealed. Scourge noticed it was the exact same one he had in the picture on the mural. 
The blonde held it up for a second, making sure everything was right before nodding in satisfaction. He rolled up his sleeve and smacked his forearm, allowing a poof of smoke to appear. Once cleared, it was revealed to be the space stone he had taken from the cube. Holding it in his right hand, he slammed it into his staff, just under where the C-shape at the top began. The stone let off a pulse of power as it sat in the staff before calming down. Now let's see if this works, he said as he applied a little chakra to the staff. It worked as the stone began to glow and a dark blue portal appeared in front of him. He is going to outpower the sage soon at this rate. SASK said, if he doesn't already. Minato agreed, though he also carried a great deal of pride for his son. All right, now we can go, he said as he held his hand out to his wife. She takes his hand and walks forward, but not before stopping to speak to her executioner. Deal with the people, she ordered as they left through the portal. The two deities reappeared in front of a shocked Thor who wasn't expecting this at all. Before the god of thunder could speak, Naruto stepped forward. You must be Thor, nice to meet you, he said calmly. Thor frowned, not understanding who this strange man was. Who the hell are you? He questioned. He'd never seen this man before. How rude, little brother. Didn't Daddy Dears teach you any manners? Hela asked. She has a point. Kushinar agreed. Oh, I'm going to like having you as a mother-in-law, I believe. Hela said. We'll see. Kakashi mumbled under his breath, getting a suspicious eye from Kushina. All right. My bad I haven't introduced myself yet. Naruto Uzumaki, I'm your brother-in-law. Thor was baffled. If the situation wasn't so dire, he believed this to be one of Loki's tricks brother-in-law. He repeated to make sure he hadn't misheard. A nod was his answer. MHM, I married your sister a long time ago. Isn't she the greatest? He asked, turning his head to glance at her. Now Thor knew something was very wrong. His sister, the greatest? Most definitely not. Oh, you're going to hurt my feelings. Hella pouted jokingly. The demigod turned to his sister. He's joking, right? She let out a chuckle. No, he's not joking. I actually did marry this simpleton a long time ago. She replied while running a finger under the blonde's chin. But let's not discuss that now. You're in my seat, she said as she ran her hands through her hair, allowing her antler-like headpiece to appear. Even in that you two managed to be cute together. Kushina gushed slightly. Minato smiled. He was happy to see her pleased with their daughter-in-law. Believe me, I'd love for someone to rule Asgard, but it can't be you because you're the worst, Thor replied. Needs work, S-A-S-K groused. Yes, you really should try practicing your lines before you make another attempt at a joke. Loki jumped in to pick at his brother. Ah, so you rehearse your jokes then, Loki? Hela asked, causing. Hela turned to the blonde. Don't interfere, was all she said before the two siblings began their duel. The blonde frowned, but complied nonetheless. As the two were duking it out, he could sense multiple battles happening near the Bifrist. I'm going to go enjoy myself, he said to his wife before he used the stone to teleport himself out of the room. Those opposing Hela didn't know it yet, but they were in for a bad time. You may take a break if you desire. Kushinel will be reading next. The host said, if you're all fine with it, I would actually like to continue on. Kushina said as she quickly flipped to the correct page. I wouldn't mind we have only been here a moment anyway. Hella said flippantly. Kushina cleared her throat and began reading straight away. The group was too into the story to take a break and instead dove right back in. Naruto appeared in the center of the bridge leading to the Bifrist where the undead army plus Scourge were fighting. All participants briefly stopped what they were doing as he arrived, but soon went back to their business. All but one, that is... A man dressed in an elegant green and gold outfit under his guardian armor, along with a golden headpiece with two long curved horns stepped forth. This man is Loki, the god of mischief. I, I would normally be happy about appearing in a story. I can't help but worry slightly, especially if you're my sister's consort. Loki said thoughtfully, I'm sure the two of you will get along swimmingly. Hella smirked, I'm sorry, but who might you be? Loki asked. Naruto looked him over briefly before answering. Well, if you want an official title, then it would be Hellas Vanguard. That, or her husband. Both of those would work, really. He answered calmly. Loki shook his head with a slight smile. I'm sorry, I thought I heard you say you were my sister's husband, but I'm sure I must have misheard. Oh no, younger me you heard? Loki said with a sigh. Naruto smiled at the man, no, you got it right. And you called her sister. 
so I guess you're my brother-in-law too. So you're his guardian. Loki concluded. Somewhat. The blonde replied, I wasn't born here, but due to circumstances here I am. He added before using his staff to smack a warrior off the bridge into the sea below without taking his eyes off him. That is actually something we might have in common. Loki said in surprise as he realized they were both born as others and became essentially his guardian. Well, Loki began as he kicked an undead knight away from him. I love chaos and destruction as much as the next god, but you. He said pointing at Nardo, don't strike me as the type. So what's your game? He asked. That's what I'm wondering. Nardo is the closest thing to a pacifist that Kanoa has produced. Ever. Sakura commented. That's funny to me. Hela commented, getting glances from the shinobi. What do you mean? Kakashi asked. My husband may not be big on destruction, or even war really, but he most definitely is a being of chaos. Wild and untamed. Hela answered with a smirk. Why did that sound so uncomfortable? It was like she was talking about. Thor began to question out loud. Thor, son, stop talking. Frigga ordered, not really wanting to discuss relations between Naruto and Hela. My game? Originally, it was to kill Odin for what he did to us, but he's dead now. There was once a time where I'd be against all of this. But after Odin betrayed us and Asgard went ahead and swept us under the rug like we never existed, I couldn't care less about this place. He's so different. Kakashi hummed. A second life, and what was it 1,500 years sealed away after being betrayed? I think that changes someone. Loki replied sarcastically. Kakashi eyed the green-clad man and decided he rather disliked this god. Imagine giving everything you had for Asgard only to end up being stabbed in the back. Everything we did was for the greatness of this place. And for what? Odin sealed my wife and I. The people didn't care enough to spread word of our existence. They just let us fade away. Seeing that he had the man's full attention, he continued. But you want to know the worst part of it? It was with Odin's blessing that I married Hela and was accepted into the family. The man used to call me son and would constantly tell me that he was glad I was the one his daughter had married. To have one of the people who seemingly cared about you the most turn on not just you, but his own blood. To find out they were weary of you. It changes you. He finished. Fair. S.A.S.K. commented. That's putting it mildly. You're lucky, old man. We can't do shit here, but I would happily kill you. Kushina growled. She would get the chance. Minato said before snapping his fingers. Like a flash. For a moment, Loki felt a pang of empathy. For he too felt Odin didn't really love him as he had claimed. So what you're here for revenge on the people then? He was kind of a shit father all around then. Hela laughed. That's not fair. Thor tried to weakly defend him. But with all the reveals, honestly, it was harder than he thought it would be. No, I really don't care about the people anymore. The blonde answered. Or Asgard in general for that matter. But Hela wants her rightful place on the throne, and I'll help her get it. He added. He really loves you. Even people that had done him wrong in the past he forgave and even typically got along with. He would genocide Asgard for you. Sakura realized in horror as she turned to the grinning goddess. I know. Isn't he romantic? Hela replied simply with a smirk. Loki chuckled slightly. The man still wasn't getting it. Yes, yes, I get it. You're in love with my sister and will seemingly do anything to see her happy that's fine, I get all that. But what's your deal? He asked, emphasizing your... Surely you have aspirations of your own, rather than just following her around? He asked. The readers leaned in. This could be interesting. The god needed information. He could feel the strength this man possessed. While he looked innocent enough, he stood tall and didn't seem to worry about what was going on around him. The mere fact that he possessed the space stone and had the ability to use it was reason enough to be weary of him. If he could somehow convince this man to join him, then perhaps his chances of survival would increase. Good luck with that. All of the shinobi, as well as Hela, Odin, and Frigga said, Loki just rolled his eyes. As he finished his train of thought, an image of a purple giant with golden armor appeared in his mind. Who was that? Minato asked. It will be revealed in time. The host interrupted any explanation. You're right. I do have aspirations of my own. The blonde finally answered. You see, one of the main reasons why wars begin is due to lack of resources. There's too many mouths, not enough to go around. When Odin told me about the Infinity Stones, I looked into it anywhere I could. 
Eventually, I found something. Loki and Thor shared very real expressions of dread at Naruto's words. I found that should anyone possess all six stones, they will basically become omnipotent. That's when it hit me. With all six stones, I could create unlimited resources in the universe. No more hunger, no more poverty, no more destroying planets for resources. Hela will rule Asgard, as she should, and I bring the universe as close to peace as possible. Of course, there will be people who try and cause conflict for other reasons. But with the six stones in my possession, well, I think they'd think twice about it, don't you think? That was pretty much my plan. S.A.S.K. said with agitation. No, I'm pretty sure your plan was to tell everyone what to do and kill them if they even thought about raising a hand against you, Kakashi replied. That's what he plans, S.A.S.K. argued. S.A.S.K. The core of his plan is to make enough of everything for everyone in the universe. That is not the same as just killing people because they are starving and angry. It's a better plan than yours cause it's not just oppression. Sakura said, causing the boy to gawk at her arguing against him. She noticed his stare. You were surprised I disagreed with you conquering the world and killing my teacher along with the other Kagi? The boy snapped his mouth shut and simply huffed waiting for the story to continue. So you want to collect the infinity stones? Loki asked. While he looked calm on the outside, on the inside, he was the embodiment of happiness. This was perfect. This might be the perfect person to beat him. Well, if that's the case, then there is something important you should know. You're not the only one. Now all that was left was to talk the man into joining him, and everything would go smoothly. Things were looking up for the god. As Naruto was about to reply, a huge lightning bolt struck the palace where Hela and Thor were currently fighting. Naruto looked up and saw the god of thunder coming down in their direction. When he landed, he noticed that the man's right eye was black and no longer open. Oh, that had to hurt. Hela joked getting a glare from Thor causing her to roll her eyes. It does hurt. Both Kakashi and SSK replied with frowns and the memory of fingers digging into their eye sockets running through their minds. Standing besides Loki, Thor turned his head towards his brother. Worry not, brother. He may be strong, but we can take him. He said before he ran forward, lightning charging itself around him. Loki didn't have the time to react as his brother rushed in. Loki stared at Thor who only shrugged his shoulders in response, as if to say, what can you do? The god of mischief wisely chose to drop it and motioned Kushina to continue. Wait, stop you oaf, I had it under control. Loki yelled. Unfortunately for him, his brother did not listen and had already begun his assault. Loki watched as the blonde just weaved and dodged every attack Thor threw at him. Thor, having realized that close combat wasn't working, jumped back and summoned lighting from his hand and directed it at Naruto. Hela seemed to be near laughter as the image of the fight displayed in the center of the room in time with Kushina reading. Minato and Kushina likewise were enjoying the sight of their son at work. Said man brought his staff forward and began to spin it at a ridiculous speed in front of him. The lightning collided with the staff and dispersed soon after. As soon as the attack died down, Naruto used the staff to parry a lightning-enhanced punch to the right. The moment he parried, he swung his staff back around and hit Thor once in the ribs before redirecting the staff to hit the man with the bottom of it under his chin. Both hits were done in rapid succession. Before Thor had a chance to compose himself, the blonde then kicked him hard in the chest, sending him stumbling back to Loki. The god of mischief watched as his brother was completely outclassed and merely stepped aside, letting his brother tumble past him rather than help slow his body down. He noticed Thor getting up again, and it didn't take a genius to know he was going to try again. No thoughts of strategy or anything, just smash what's in front of you. Does that actually work for you? Sakura asked only to blush as Kakashi and SSK gave her wide-eyed stares of disbelief. You know what, never mind, Miss Kushina, please keep reading. Sakura mumbled. As Thor moved past him, he stopped him with a hand on his shoulder. Why are you stopping me, brother? He demanded. As he answered, a black and green portal opened up next to the blonde, and out of it stepped their sister. Well, for one, Hela just arrived. And second, we were about to come to an arrangement before you arrived. I need you to stand down. Loki told him, well, perhaps you all can find a way to come to a compromise. For the good of Asgard. Frigga said, only partially caring about Asgard, she truly did care for all four of them, though she was never close to Naruto and Hela. 
Thor looked over at the two and back to his brother and nodded. He didn't want to back down, but decided to put his trust in Loki. However, just in case, he had instructed the Valkyrie to get the crown of Surtur as he realized exactly what he had to do. If in the next few minutes they couldn't handle things peacefully, well, their home would be destroyed. That's awfully petty. You can't be king, so you destroy your home to keep her from being queen? That's just... Minato was a bit disgusted, truth be told. Well, don't say it like that. I, Thor defended. He stopped when he realized none of the shinobi were really all that interested in being convinced of anything by the man opposed to their friend and loved one and his wife. Now, as I was saying, Loki began. You're not the only one who's looking to collect all six Infinity Stones. However, unlike you, this person isn't looking to use them for reasons as noble as you are. I see, and are you planning on telling me who this person is? Naruto asked. Loki grinned, I might. Perhaps we can come to an arrangement. Hela sent Loki a very annoyed glance, one mirrored by Kushina and, oddly enough, SSK as well. Snake, Kushina huffed, reminds me of Orochimaru, SASK said with a sick expression. Hela scoffed next to Naruto, he really sounds like Odin. Really ticks me off, she commented. Naruto just looked at her amused before turning his attention back to Loki. Take that back, Loki said instantly. It's not that bad. Odin finally joined in with his take. Says you. I think it's a horrible insult. Hella laughed. Okay, I'll bite. What kind of arrangement? He asked as he tilted his head to avoid an arrow. We become allies. This man is not one to take lightly. He's powerful. Unbelievably so. He responded. You're afraid. Hella said. Whoever this person is must be far stronger than you, and you feel the need to seek protection. She added. That's a given. S.A.S.K. said with a scoff. You wouldn't take him lightly either even if you were once Naruto's equal. He is a threat to the universe as a whole. Thor said seriously. S.A.S.K. frowned at being reminded that Naruto had surpassed him. Loki glared at her before willing his anger down. It wouldn't do to get angry at the moment. He could swallow his pride for the time being. You're partially right. He admitted. I do not seek protection, but rather allies as he will no doubt come looking for me. What do you mean, brother? Thor asked seriously. He'd never once heard Loki admit to needing help. This was worrying. Loki was going to answer, but was beaten to it by the blonde man. Your brother must have worked for him at some point. He began, either you screwed up and he's after you, or you backstabbed him. Either way, you're on his shit list. He clarified. As he finished his sentence, he noticed that the ship that was being loaded with the Asgardian people was beginning to take off. He closed his eyes and gathered his chakra. On nail on the head, huh? Kushina giggled at Loki's annoyed expression. Using his magnet release, he created the magnetic field around the area and pulled the ship back down, crashing into the bridge they were on. All right, so what do you want from this alliance then? He did that frighteningly easily. Frigga commented. Thor was stunned. His brother, the god of mischief and lies, was actually solving their issue with arguably the two strongest beings they've seen in a civil manner. He never thought he'd see the day. This is what happens when you don't approach every obstacle like that simple green monster friend of yours. Loki scolded his brother. Thor eyed his brother sourly, but said nothing. There was a point to be made there. All I ask is that when that man comes to try and kill me, you give me a hand with him. Likewise, he'll be coming after you soon too. After all, you're in possession of an infinity stone, so he'll try and take it from you. Loki answered. That and you leave the people of Asgard in peace. Thor butted in, glaring at his brother briefly for not mentioning that bit in his negotiation. You can have all the peace you want around here, as long as they kneel before me. Hela answered back. That's all they have to do. I'm the rightful heir to the throne, and as such I'm their queen. Once they kneel before me, this can all end. The Ur and Hela glared at one another, while the rest of the readers wanted to see how this would play out. We'll accept this so long as the executions cease. No ruling with an iron fist. This isn't your time anymore. Times have changed. People have changed. Thor said. That is debatable. Hella scoffed. There was little bite in it though. I know you must be angry. But really, to rule people there has to be a people to rule. Minato said getting the woman to roll here eyes in annoyance. You may be my husband's father. But what are you 25? Don't lecture me, child. Hella sneered. 
Helen narrowed her eyes and was about to retort when the ground began shaking. Everyone looked up as a large chunk of the land behind them exploded as a giant monster of earth and fire began rising above Asgard. Oh no, Thor whispered. What did you do? Loki asked angrily. I sent the Valkyrie to release Surtur as he was cut off by his fellow blonde. Destroying Asgard would drain Hela of her power. He finished. Once again, the Thor smash strategy strikes again. Woe that your name didn't start with an A, and let me create a fun little acronym. Loki bemoaned. He sang it would spell ASS, and that would fit you well. Hela said, Thor mined a laughing face before turning away from his siblings while Thor groaned. They're like normal siblings but with crazy amounts of power. It's kind of scary. Kushinus said, Hopefully Naruto will rein them all in. Minato agreed. Yeah, don't count on that. Kakashi mumbled as he shook his head. Hello was right earlier Naruto was kind of a force FO chaos, so he didn't really see the blonde reigning in anything. Tremble before me Asgard. Yelled Surtur as he raised his sword high in the air. Would have been a brilliant plan had I not been here as well. Naruto commented as he watched Surtur wind up his weapon. Naruto stood calmly and materialized a truth-seeking orb through his hand and willed it to take the form of a large disc. I'll be back in a second, don't do anything stupid now. He said before a blue and black portal opened behind him and took him in. The room collectively felt a little self-conscious about their own abilities at the moment. Barring Hela, she was just enjoying this different point of view of the events honestly. Thor was tempted to attack Hela now that the blonde was gone, but decided against it. Everyone watched as Surtur swung his giant blade down into the city, destroying a few buildings before something unthinkable happened. As he was scraping the sword along the ground, it hit something before turning into dust. What has happened? Thor asked what happened to Surtur's weapon. He followed up looking at Hela then at his team. It was the black shield he created. It's one of the many abilities my beloved can use. Hela answered. Kushina was all smiles reading that line much to Hela and Minato's amusement. Hela could see where he got some of his more enjoyable personality traits from. Yes, of course it is, isn't it? Loki asked rhetorically. Seriously, how many abilities did this man have? Loki glanced over at the shinobi who all shrugged. They didn't have a clue anymore. Naruto just seemed to perpetually grow in skill and power over time. Over in center of Asgard, the blonde was looking up at the giant as if appraising him. Well, you're bigger than last time, that's for sure. The blonde commented. Not that it'll make much of a difference for you, though. Rather than answer, Surtur brought his hands up high in the air, preparing a hammer fist. At least that was the plan. Seeing what was to come, Naruto once more activated the stone and disappeared from his spot before reappearing above them. Once more creating a truth-seeking orb, he changed it into the shield once more and thrusted straight into the giant's arms. Surtur moves way too slowly for him to stand a chance against Naruto. SASK commented, Yeah, this won't be much of an actual fight, I bet. More of a one-sided beatdown. Sakura agreed. He is the fastest shinobi in history. Kakashi added in. Minato's eyes widened before a conflicted expression of pride and defeat slipped onto his face. The effect was immediate. His arms all the way to the elbow turned to dust. The giant let out a monstrous scream, not in pain, but in anger. Willing the stone to send him back to the floor, he activated his magnet release once more while the beast was screaming. That power is terrifying. Odin commented, Bet that helped in your decision. Hella huffed. Yes. The man simply replied. As he raised his arms in the air, the destroyed pieces that were buildings of Asgard levitated into the air around him. He created five giant nails out of the debris and made a motion with his hand. All at once, the five pieces flew to the giant, two impaling him on each leg before the final one embedded itself in his chest. It's unreal, Minato said in a bit of awe at his boy's power. His face was split with a broad grin. That's my son, Kushina grinned. They realize he is effectively using a destroyed city to nail a living being to the ground, right? Loki asked in wonder. Oh, they know. I'm going to get along well with mom and dad, I think. Hella said with a smile. Now to finish him off. He commented. He smacked the bottom end of his staff into the floor and allowed himself to be pulled into the portal once more. He reappeared in front of the now kneeling Surtur 
and brought his hands up in a single hand sign. Senpo, Rantan Kuga, he thought before releasing a very sharp and thin stream of light from his mouth. He twisted his head back and forth rapidly and was pleased as the beam easily cut the giant in half at the waist and removed its head from the body. The head dropped down and landed with a very hard thud, which left a small crater in the ground. The blonde approached it before turning it to dust with a simple thrust of his arm. With the crown of Surtur having been reduced to dust, the eternal flame which had powered the man was put out. Well, that's that then, Sakura said in mild disbelief. She had known he had become incredibly powerful, but to end an apocalyptic threat like it was child's play. It just left her a bit numb, really. Within seconds, all that remained of the giant was bones and ashes. Asgard, for the most part, was intact with the exception of the few buildings he managed to destroy. Having finished what he had come to do, he tapped his staff and was once again being pulled into the portal. Back on the bridge, both Thor and Loki were staring at the distance in disbelief. That shouldn't be possible. The God of Thunder said out loud. At that moment, their final team member joined them on the bridge. Thor, what happened to Surtur? She asked as she jumped high into the sky before landing next to the brothers. One moment she saw the giant prepare to destroy the city, and the next he was gone. As she moved her gaze from where Surtur had been, she realized that the two weren't fighting against Hela like she had expected. She was about to ask about this when she stopped dead in her tracks. Next to the goddess of death, a portal opened up, and out of it came someone she had hoped to never see again. Her eyes widened, and her mouth dried up. She tried to talk, but no words would escape her. Even the sound of Thor's voice asking her, what's wrong couldn't help her. All she could think about was the day she and her sisters in arms were decimated by Hela and the blonde. How easily he had brushed them off. Hela was powerful, yes, but the blonde was on a completely different level. Valkyrie, that finally got through to her. I don't know what has you so shaken up, but fear not. We're close to resolving the problem. Hela's husband is surprisingly a lot more reasonable than she is. Thor told her. Thor winced as he had a better point of view on the situation now. Well, began Loki watching you take care of that pile of bones was entertaining, but we do have matters to attend to. So, do we have a deal? He asked. The blonde rubbed his chin in thought. What do you think? He asked turning to Hela. The goddess turned to the Asgardians and stared at them for a minute before speaking. That depends. Will Asgard be left under my rule? She asked the trio. As long as you honor your part of the deal, we'll leave Asgard to you. Thor conceded. Not exactly how I imagined this playing out, but very well. We have a deal, Naruto said. As the words left the blonde's mouth, Loki let out a breath he didn't know he had been holding. They had really lucked out. Had it been someone more arrogant or power-hungry, he doubted things would have gone this smooth. He is a blessing in disguise. Loki said with Thor nodding along and even Odin begrudgingly agreeing. What is guys? Hela asked. Kushina grinned at that. Her boy knew how to pick them, it seemed. Naruto turned to Hela and nodded in the direction of the undead warriors who were still in a deadlock with the remaining Asgardian forces. Understanding what it was that he wanted of her, she walked forward towards her army. Though they had a truce at the moment, the Asgardian trio were still on very high alert as she passed by them. Halt! She commanded. The battle is over. Pull back. Her army followed her order obediently and began walking back towards Asgard. Thor walked up as well and said his piece. Citizens of Asgard, we have come in agreement. Hela will be the new ruler of Asgard. Seeing that some people were getting wide-eyed, he quickly continued. But worry not as I shall be around to make sure she keeps her end of the agreement. He added successfully calming the crowd down. Now please, let us make our way back to Asgard. An hour later, the group of six, since Banner had finally landed, were in the throne room. The room was missing a ceiling as Thor and Hela had destroyed it during their battle earlier on. The goddess wasted no time in taking her spot on the throne. Naruto took his spot standing beside her and crossed his arms, his staff still in hand. The picture of power and grace. Hela said gleefully, This is going to be an insufferable time. Loki commented, All right. Time to keep your part of the deal. Naruto told Loki, who is it that's coming after the Infinity Stones? As Loki was about to answer, they noticed that the sky above them was getting darker 
and in seconds Asgard was covered in darkness. Jumping onto the roof of the building, they noticed a ship slowly coming down. It was many times larger than the ones the Asgardian people were trying to escape in. Turning his attention back to the blonde, he spoke. That would be the mad titan Thanos. Action after action. Can't they get a chance to rest? Kushina who's fit. With that chapter complete, I believe it is time for you all to take a break. We shall return shortly. You will find spare rooms. Each is a bedroom marked with your name and has a conjoining master back. There is also plenty of foods and drinks to enjoy. The host said simply before seeming to stare at nothing with its dark, cryptic eyes. Well, I for one could eat, Minato said. They have Asgardian, Earthling, and Elemental Nations food. Hela agreed happily, going for the ramen. Her husband may have influenced her taste to an extent. Having settled back into their seats after a hearty meal, most of the room stared at the odd pair of Kushina and Hela as they laughed and chatted in hushed tones, occasionally getting just loud enough for the others to make out their conversation. Between the no, he didn't, and I'm not kidding, he can be such a child. They knew the mother was soaking up stories of her son from his wife. It was a bit difficult for her to know other people knew her boy better than her, but getting to spend time with his wife was still a great time. Your attention, please. We shall begin reading again. The host announced before snapping once more and causing the book to appear in SSK's hands. The Uchiha let out a long, suffering sigh while his teammates rolled their eyes at his reaction. He was reading about the future. How exactly did he manage to act completely uninterested? Thanos. Huh? The blonde says to himself as he watches the spacecraft hover above them. The citizens of Asgard had already ran into the city in a panic. The group watched as a blue beam shot out of the ship, hitting the ground a few yards away from them. In a split second, two figures appeared. The first was an ash gray figure short in stature who had white hair slicked back. The man had no nose and wore dark gray armor with some gold trim. Gonna guess neither of those are this Thanos guy. Kushina said, doubt it. Evidently, he is some big purple being that appears to have a scrotum for a chin. Hella said flippantly, the Asgardian's younger brothers stared at her before glancing at one another. They had to wonder if they both had described him the same way. Unsurprisingly, they most definitely had. The second was a tad bit taller than the first. He's a reptilian-looking man with scales. He wore similar armor to the first, though he left his left shoulder exposed and wielded a large metal chain hammer. So, which one of these two is Thanos? Naruto asked Loki, taking his eyes off the two. Neither. The god of mischief replied. These two were his children. He clarified. Really? Hela interrupted, truly faces only a mother could love. She mocked. Naruto chuckled and was about to speak when he was cut off by the shorter of the two invaders. Oh, good one, though that might be generous. Kushina said with a giggle. How catty. I love it. Hela replied. Odin grumbled. No wonder Naruto and Hela hit it off so well. Oh, come off of it, Odin. You know we are dead and getting a new chance at life with all of this. We can actually be a happy family for once. Frigga said, frowning pointedly at the end. The one-eyed god simply grumbled more and crossed his arms. One Hela was bad enough. Add in another one with some of the abilities of his son-in-law. Not to mention both women would have an extremely loyal and devoted Naruto around. Nearby Kakashi stared at Odin with a knowing look. He had to wonder, who did the supposed gods pray to when they wanted divine intervention in something? Hear me and rejoice. Began the short one. For your salvation has arrived. You will have the privilege of being saved by the great titan. And in your certain death, every last one of you will become children of Thanos. He continued. Today, whatever he was going to say was stopped as Thor interrupted. Loki, who the hell are these two? He asked. Ah, the son of Odin. My name is Ebony Ma, and this is Cull Obsidian. The now named Ma introduced. We are the children of Thanos, and we are here for one thing, and one thing only. He said before pointing at Naruto's staff. The stone. Half of the room snorted in mild laughter, while the other half scoffed as if a lackey was threatening. Naruto lifted the staff up to his face and stared at the two through the C-shape. You mean this one right here? He asked rhetorically while pointing at it. Yeah, that's gonna be a no. He says while resting it on his shoulder. Shocker. S-A-S-K chuckled. 
His old rival seemed to have picked up an additional helping of Snark at some point. He could appreciate that at least. You have been going on for a bit about this Thanos, though. He's the one that wants it, right? Tell him to come down here himself if he wants it. Naruto challenged, the smile never leaving his face. Ma, on the other hand, did not look as happy. He narrowed his eyes and held his arms behind his back. Without turning to his partner, he gave the order. Bring me the stone. This will be entertaining. Hella said with a smile. One that was nothing but teeth. Cole made a grunt of acknowledgement and slammed his hammer down before walking their way. Everyone but Naruto and Hella prepared for battle, but were stopped as Naruto raised a hand. Cole sped up and jumped high into the air, preparing to bring the hammer down. Move! Naruto ordered as they all jumped back. Not needing to use hand signs, the blonde inhaled a deep breath of air before expelling it in short, rapid bursts. The result was wind bullets traveling faster than the eye could see. Cole managed to shield himself from three using the hammer, but was eventually hit by six of them in the chest. Naruto did not give him time to recuperate. He appeared in front of him and begun willing the air around them. He began making slicing motions with his hands in front of Cole. The man's chest armor broke effortlessly as an X began appearing on his chest where the wind was cutting into him. Seconds later, the wind had managed to completely cut through the man, leaving only pieces of the scaled man remaining. Asterisk no hand seals at all. Minato commented in joy. That's one thing. Naruto rarely uses more than one or two hand signs. His version of mastering a jutsu is that he can just use it with a thought. Kakashi explained. Do you know what they're talking about? Thor asked Loki. Loki simply gave him a look out of the corner of his eyes before it turning his attention back to the dark-haired shinobi. Thor huffed at being ignored, but said no more. Now only one thing remains. Naruto said. Ma narrowed his eyes and raised his arms. Debris laying around began to levitate as the man prepared his attack. Naruto stared up at the ship before closing his eyes and activating his magnet release around the entire area. He raised his arm towards the ship, made a fist, and began pulling. To everyone's amazement, the giant ship began coming down before hitting the ground with a force that could be felt for miles. When the shaking stopped and the smoke from the impact cleared another blue beam hit the ground. This time a more imposing figure stepped out. His powers are amazing. Sakura said with a grin at the heights her brother figure had reached. Is this imposing figure that the book mentioned? Thanos? Minato asked. Wait for the description and we will see. Loki pointed out. A giant purple man stood tall. He wore golden armor with a matching golden helmet. On his left hand was a matching gold gauntlet. Though what caught everyone's attention was the bright purple stone shining from just above the knuckle. Ah, yep, that's the one. Kushina said, and he already has one of the stones. Minato said with mild worry. That's Thanos, Loki said in slight fear. Being around the Mad Titan always put him on edge. Don't worry, baby brother, your big sister and her husband will protect you. He la taunted. I really don't think I can handle this family dynamic, the god of mischief said. Because you are the baby of the family? Kushina asked, sounding almost genuine. More because it's recently doubled in size with no never mind. Loki wisely said as he noticed the narrowed eyes of Minato and Kushina. So you're the Mad Titan? Naruto asked, stepping forward, staff still resting on his shoulder. He noticed the giant man's eyes focus on the stone the whole time before focusing on him. That's the name that stuck with me in the past year, so yes. You're an interesting one, though. To be able to wield an infinity stone is not something just anyone can do. Who are you? Thanos asked. Naruto Uzumaki. The blonde answered. I'll try and remember that. Now you have something that belongs to me. Thanos said looking at the stone once again. This is awkwardly polite for two godlike powers squaring off. Sakura commented. Please. Without those stones, there is nothing godlike about Thanos. He la corrected. It went without saying that she left Naruto out of that comment. Is that so? Funny. I was about to tell you the same thing. Naruto answered while pointing his staff at the gauntlet. The universe is going to be kind of boring with him in charge. Thor commented as the battles he sort of enjoyed would be a lot less common. Careful, brother. You sound like a warmonger or something. Loki chided sarcastically. Oh. No plots against your sister and brother-in-law? Odin asked. 
Oh look, Daddy comes to the rescue of his favorite yet again. Hila yum pidin. Sensei, your holidays are always going to be terrible. Kakashi said to his teacher quietly. That's where you're wrong, Kakashi. Why do you think I picked your team as a jonin? I thrive on this sort of stuff. Minato happily chirped back. The silver-haired man stared at his teacher for a while before sighing heavily. That explains way too much shit to me. He said, turning his attention back to the story. I see. Ma, take care of the others. I'll get the stone myself. Ma nodded and began his attack while Thanos stared down the blonde. Naruto knew Thanos was on a different level than the other two. The way the man carried himself was proof of that. Most would be sweating in apprehension, knowing that a titan was heading their way, but not him. Sakura said, getting looks. Sorry, just the thought of Naruto backing down because of someone being tough. If he hasn't completely changed over time, he'll probably be excited to the point he will be looking to jump his wife's bones afterward. Sakura explained. The room nodded, and SSK prepared to continue reading before something clicked in his mind, and he suddenly looked at Sakura more sharply. SASK, I'm telling this as your friend. You don't want to open that door. Kakashi said clearly. SSK looked at his teacher, then back at Sakura, who seemed to be caught up in a memory. That stung. Kakashi was probably right on this one, though. After years of being sealed away and his power being unmatched in the world, he felt a shiver of excitement run up and down his spine. An opponent who would put up a hell of a fight. He was by no means a battle maniac, but even he couldn't resist a good battle every now and then. He gripped the staff hard, and the space stone began glowing, as if ready for the fight as well. Battle is exhilarating. Thor agreed. It can be. Minato added in. It can also be sickening. The ground underneath Naruto broke as he charged at Thanos. The mad titan's eyes widening at the speed. Naruto went for a punch that Thanos tried to anticipate, but it was a fake out as Naruto twisted his body in to give a heel kick, but Thanos was just as quick. Grabbing Naruto by his heel, he started to spin, going so fast that all the others would be able to see was a golden purple blur. Wow, I didn't expect that purple thing to move so fast. Kushina said in surprise. Releasing Naruto, Thanos gave chase. Striking Naruto while he was still flying until finally grabbing the man by the face and slamming the back of his head in the ground. All of them, including Odin, looked displeased at that. Usually that would have taken a normal person out, but not our favorite blonde. He did not even have time to reach for the staff as Naruto got back up rolling his neck with a cheeky smile, not bad old timer. You ready to get serious now? Thanos gave a chuckle, taking off his armor bar his gauntlet. You have a lot of spunk warrior. I admire that. Something I used to have when I was younger. Oh God, Kakashi said as he saw the start of a possible rivalry brewing. He then rolled his eyes at the look sent him by Hela. Naruto was once again on Thanos, rearing his tight fist back as the mad titan did the same. A massive shockwave followed, sending his guardians flying. Thor could only look in awe at the powerful display in front of him. Loki watched in unease, hoping things would go his favor. If his brother-in-law couldn't beat the Titan, no one would. Hela watched in pride. Pride that her husband could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the most powerful beings in the universe and hold his own. The reader shared the same expressions with pride showing clearly on his parents' faces, and as much as it was hidden behind its mask, Kakashi's face shared the same look. Sakura looked a little stunned though she knew Naruto was impossibly strong. And SSK was less than surprised though, he couldn't help the twinge of jealousy at what his former rival has achieved. Standing in the middle of the busted street was the two, Naruto's fist meeting Thanos as the two battled for dominance. Then with a roar and a blinding light, Naruto was in his most powerful form. His armor glowing white as his six paths power was activated for the first time in what felt like forever. With his now enhanced strength, he sent Thanos skipping along the street from the power of his punch. That alone though would not be enough to stop Thanos. The man regained his footing and got on the defensive. Naruto appeared in front of him and began throwing combinations of punches and kicks which were deflected. Likewise, Thanos tried using his bigger form to try and cause as much damage as he could. One of his punches was actually caught by the blonde before being tossed aside. The dynamic in the battle has completely shifted in Naruto's favor. Thor said, he has Thanos on the defensive already. 
Loki had witnessed it, but Stee was a hard pill to swallow. Using that brief window, did a jumping spin kick to the face that landed and managed to have the Titan stumbling back briefly. He didn't have much time to recuperate thought as the blonde was on him. Naruto buried the staff into the ground at the handle and quickly launched four chakra, enhanced punches to the chest and ribs in the blink of an eye. If the grimace on the Titan's face was any indication, he would say they were doing their job, inflicting damage even through the armor. Calling his staff to him, using his magnet release, in a split second he thrust it forward using the curved end to grasp the man's throat and lift him into the air. On his left hand, a mini raisin shuriken formed, which was then flicked into the man's chest, sending him flying away before detonating, creating a massive dome of energy. The dome glowed purple for a few seconds before dispersing. Thanos walked out of the attack, body releasing some smoke and multiple cuts here and there along with a few bruises on his face, but relatively okay. After all that, and he just looks a bit roughed up, Sakura said in horror, Have faith in my husband. Hela said fully confident in Naruto. An interesting attack. He admitted it's been a while since someone was able to harm me this much. He added, The mad titan raised his gauntlet up and let the stone glow ominously. It seems I'll have to take this more serious than I anticipated. However, I'll give you one last chance to hand over the stone before I'm forced to take it from you. You know, you never did say what you wanted the stones for. Enlighten me, Naruto said, his space stone matching the glow of the power stone. While well, seeing as how you won't be alive much longer, I'll humor you. The universe is overpopulated. Too many mouths, not enough to go around. He began. Naruto nodded his head in agreement that there was too many people with not enough resources. With the Infinity Stones, I can snap my fingers and half the universe will cease to exist. Some would call it genocide, but I call it mercy. Saving them from imminent starvation. He finished. Right? What about after they're gone? People could just start reproducing again, and this problem would repeat itself. See? I have a better idea. With the Infinity Stones, I can create unlimited resources. Enough to go around for everyone. Is he going to SASK began with narrowed eyes. It's likely. Sakura said simply. That would actually be the funniest way for this to end. Kakashi commented with a chuckle knowing what the two meant. I'd end world hunger, war over resources, and much more. Which is why I'm going to have to take the stone from you. Naruto said as he spun the staff quickly before slamming it into the ground. If you do that, all living creatures would depend on one being. They'd stop striving for greater heights. I'd love to continue a philosophical conversation, but I have a universe to balance. I'll be taking the stone, Thanos said as a beam of purple light erupted from the gauntlet. I guess not, Kakashi said. Tsk, give it time, Sask knowingly said. He hadn't been persuaded the first time either. Narrowing his eyes, Naruto spun the staff rapidly in front of him, similar to how he did to Thor and managed to hold off the attack. Unlike Thor's attack, however, this had a lot more power behind it as he had to quickly step aside as the attack became too much. Had he held on longer, the staff would have broken. He ducked quickly to avoid a power stone enhanced punch before smacking away another fist, returning one of his own. It made contact, but didn't stop the Titan. He had to hand it to him. Even in his rusty six paths form the man could still hold his own. That's just scary, actually. Minato quietly stated having seen the six paths himself. He threw a straight right which was caught by Thanos before being his with an infinity stone enhanced left head which sent him flying. The mad titan wasn't finished as he rushed forward and once more let off a purple beam of energy from the gauntlet. This time, the beam hit its target. Naruto grit his teeth as his body was no longer in peak condition to handle the six paths form at the moment, and the concentrated energy from the Infinity Stone was doing more damage than it should have. He barely managed to leap to the right to avoid an energy blast but was caught by a kick to the chest by the giant. His back hit the solid gold wall of a building which managed to stop him from being sent further. He's doing this well against Thanos with a handicap. Thor realized feeling incredibly smaller than he had before being brought to the Nexus Room. Damn, he's powerful enough on his own. That stone just amplifies his power even more. Gonna have to end this. He thought as he brought his right hand up. On his fingertips, five different colored spheres materialized, 
each being a different element combined with a mini raisin shuriken. He slammed the staff into the ground before tossing the spheres into the portal that had opened. Sometimes I forget just how much of a genius you actually are, Naruto. Kakashi chuckled at the new technique being used by the blonde. Getting his bearings together, he flew forward and met with the titan once more. He landed and blocked two punches before kicking the man in the chest, sending the man stumbling back slightly. Taking a deep breath, he exhaled it all in one breath, releasing a single line of pressurized air. Thanos saw it coming and managed to duck. Had he turned around, he would have seen pieces of some of the buildings of Asgard being sliced like butter. As he looked up, he noticed the blonde was missing. He realized too late to look behind him as he felt a sharp pain on his spine. The blonde had hit him with the bottom end of the staff right in the center of his back. Even with the special armor, the staff managed to break through and make contact. The group awed at Naruto's abilities. Healthy fear and respect for him grew in all of their hearts, and a certain goddess of death locked her lips at the showing of power from her lover. Naruto saw the titan drop to a knee as a result of the chakra in hand stabbed to the back and saw it as his best opportunity to end it. He teleported in front of Thanos and delivered a strong enough uppercut to the chin that managed to lift the man into the air. He slammed his staff into the floor and opened a portal above the man. Out of it came the five orbs he had previously created. At point-blank range, Thanos didn't have the time to protect himself and could only brace himself for the impact. Not wanting to be caught in the attack, the blonde allowed himself to be pulled backwards into the blue portal and got out of the area. He is able to think up such elaborate and devastating strategies on the fly. Odin said in mild awe. He had forgotten to an extent his son-in-law's skills. He hated to admit it even mentally, but Naruto was like a perfect combination of his three children. Naruto reappeared a couple thousand feet away where the others were battling Maw. Everyone turned when they felt the ground shake, followed by a big explosion. So, I take it Thanos has been handled, darling? Hela asked. She noted he had some bruising in the face along with some bits of his amour broken. He spit up a bit of blood. Is it weird that seeing him fresh from a fight kind of... Hella wondered aloud. Not at all. When Minato would come back from battle. Mm, Kushina said. The same for me and your father. You probably don't want details, but there is just something about your man coming back and needing a bit of tender care while having that powerful energy from victory about him. Frigga stated as her eyes flashed with remembered moments from eras ago. The majority of the room shifted awkwardly as the three women easily grew friendlier with one another. Sakura especially, as she wanted to be a part of the little group. Should be. He's really durable. Took some of my powerful attacks head on and still fought like nothing happened. We'll find out in a few. He asked before looking at a panting ma who was floating atop of a piece of debris. You guys having trouble with him? He asked as he began to float. It's his telekinesis that's the problem. Thor answered. Hmm. Naruto needs more powerful allies. SSK commented, getting a series of glares. I didn't mean you. He needs more along with you. The other two won't cut it. He said, looking at Hela. Oh, well then. Yes, I agree. Hela nodded, causing Thor and Loki to lose their glares for exasperated looks. He has great control over it. Once we get too close, he simply levitates and uses the surrounding area against us. Loki answered. He was going to add more when they had to move out of the way of a purple beam. Ma widened his eyes at what he saw and quickly rushed to his master's side. Thanos stood in front of them once more, though not as he had before. The man no longer had most of his upper body armor, only a small bit remaining on his left shoulder. His helmet all but gone. He was sporting multiple burns along his body, and the front of his forearms were cut up so badly you could no longer see his purple skin on them. He's lucky to be alive. Still, he took that attack better than I imagined he would. Minato said, Master, are you all right? Ma asked as he levitated objects around them to act as protection. Taking a few deep breaths, the man replied, I'll live. It seems I greatly underestimated not only his strength, but the control he has over the space stone. We're going to have to return for it some other time. This greatly shocked Ma, as he'd never seen his master retreat, but he was not one to question orders. Thanos flexed the gauntlet and let off a powerful scream before slamming a fist to the floor. The ground shook and exploded, the shockwave destroying everything in its path courtesy of the power stone. 
Naruto and the group had no choice but to move as to not be hit. In that time, Ma and Thanos were beamed back into their ship and quickly began ascending back into the sky. Damn, at least they stopped Thanos from getting another stone. Loki grumbled, but tried to reassure himself. In time, Thanos won't stand a chance. Naruto was handicapped for this battle. Hela said, but the Mad Titan will grow stronger with time as well. Thor said with a grin look on his face. Should we try and stop them? Asked the Valkyrie as they were running. No, answered Naruto. I've reached my limit for now. I've been sealed for too long that my body won't handle my full power at the moment. I can still access my most powerful form, but it doesn't do the same damage it used to. We'll have to let them go for now. He'll be back. That will be something to see. Minato said somewhat excited to see his son truly go all out. Finally, they turned back and saw that they were in the clear. A large part of Asgard had been turned to rubble, but nothing that couldn't be rebuilt. This is bad. Loki began. He'll see you as a major threat now. I'm certain he's going to collect the other stones before saving you for last. Once the other five four are in his possession, he'll be almost impossible to deal with. Even if you have a stone, then we'll have to stop him from getting the others. Or at least beat him to some of them. Hela responded. Do any of you know anyone who might have some information? She asked her brothers. It's kind of like an adventure story starting. This will be even more fun than I thought. Kushina commented excitedly getting a grin from her husband as he agreed. They said nothing for a moment before the god of mischief smiled. Actually, yes. Everyone turned to him. As a matter of fact, my brother happens to know of a few people who might be able to help us out. Thor's eyes lit up as he knew who his brother was talking about. Yes, Loki is right. He said before turning to one person who seemed really out of place. Banner. Looks like we're going to be meeting with the Avengers. He said happily. Well, that is an interesting name. Kakashi commented. Fitting though. Thor said. Yeah, because they avenge things rather than save them. Sniped Loki, getting a heated glare from Thor. Who are the Avengers? Naruto asked in confusion. Having never heard of the group, Hela shrugged her shoulders, equally confused. They're Earth's mightiest heroes. Thor replied. They'll be a great help, I promise you. All right. So, where is this Earth? Naruto asked, ready to go. It's Midgard. Hela answered. Oh. We'll have to use the Bifrost then, as I don't know exactly where we're going, so I can't use the stone. He said. Wait. I just realized that stone essentially lets him use the Horatian without tags. Minato said excitedly. Min, Kushina began. No, I mean actually even better, it's amazing. Oh, I'm so proud and jealous, but mostly proud, of course. Minato rambled. Why can't you be a cute father like him? Hela asked. I am a warrior and a king. Odin said gruffly. I mean, he pretty much is too, though. Butchering armies single-handedly. Ruling as an absolute monarch till death or abdication. She pointed out. Read the story. Odin huffed at S.A.S.K. I'm not one of your subjects, old man. S.A.S.K. snarled. S.A.S.K., please. Sakura asked. Whatever. The Uchiha said. Odin simply glared while mentally complaining about the youth always being such a pain. Very well. I don't believe we damaged it during the battle, so we should be all set. Let's be off, Thor said as they began walking. As they walked, Naruto couldn't help but wonder what kind of beings were in Midgard. If Hellas brothers knew them, then they must be powerful. He shook his head of those thoughts. He wrapped his arm around the goddess of death and continued their walk. All he knew was that he had infinity stones to collect as his greatest battle was rapidly approaching. I even while just walking holding on to each other like that. Kushinakud. He is very handy and touchy-feely. It took getting used to, but I wouldn't have it any other way now, I suppose. Hella said with a placid smile. You may take another break if you wish. The host declared as the book disappeared from SSK's hands with a snap and a flash. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all are enjoyed this video. If you do, please leave a like, share, and subscribe. Also, don't forget to support author of this fanfic. So let's end this video here. Until then, see you in next video.